Hey guys, welcome to this week's WTF. We're doing something totally different. I'm not trying on a crazy expensive product. I'm not going through my day and wearing it. I'm actually just going to share with you more expensive concealers that I think are not worth the price that are duds. So recently when I did an awful concealers from the drugstore video, I was reading the comment section and a lot of you guys wanted to see the same video but with more expensive concealers so that you would know what to avoid. And I'm thinking I might do this with eyeliners, lip liners, lipsticks, glosses, you know, there are so many different categories out there of more high-end products that I just think are not worth your money and I have better options that I will share with you as well. Again, I always give the big disclaimer, if this works for you, keep using it. It's as simple as that. This is just my opinion. We all have different skin types. We all want different things from our products. If I'm talking about concealer, I want my dark circles to be banished and I want no creases. Those are my two things that I look for. That is a little bit much to ask for from a concealer because creasing happens more often than not. I would say the best one out there, the like anomaly of the bunch is the Tarte Shape Tape. That one is worth the hype. Oh my God, mind blown, it is so good. So you'll hear me complaining a lot about creasing because that tends to be like the most annoying thing. You put on your concealer, you look in the mirror, everything looks beautiful, you set it with a little bit of powder, and then about an hour later, you go and look in the mirror again and you're like, oh, whoa, like things are looking worse. Things are looking exaggerated. I don't want that. That's not what I signed up for. So the first one that I'm gonna share with you guys that just did not work out for me is the Under Eye High Coverage Concealer from Laura Mercier. A lot of Laura Mercier face products are beautiful. She's very, very well known for that translucent powder that everybody loves. It's such a good one. But this just did not work out for me. I used it several times. I mean, you squeeze it out and just a little bit goes a long way. It is very, very thick very high coverage. So I would almost say this could be good on the face to cover up any pigmentation, um, but it does have a little bit of a wet finish. So maybe that's why they call it an under eye. I don't know. I just, I feel like underneath the eye, this is so thick that it just has a desire to crinkle and want to exaggerate everything underneath there that is not going right. And I mean, I don't care if you're 20 or 50, like we all have little lines underneath our eyes. It just happens from smiling, from moving your facial muscles around, like fine lines happen underneath the eye pretty early on in life. I know I've been using eye creams from the time I was about 19, no exaggeration. Um, that's like a great beauty tip to you young guys out there, start using eye cream now. Your face will thank you for it later. Now one that I really wish I loved more than I do, some people can wear this and not have an issue with it. I've tried it over and over and over and over, like hoping to God that it would work for me. And this is the Amazing Cosmetics Amazing Concealer. It's like the same kind of a thick texture as the Laura Mercier. It's a little bit thinner in consistency, but it gives very, very high coverage and you can almost see a reflection there. It has a very wet finish. But because it's thicker, if you were to pat this out with a beauty blender, it kind of grabs and sticks and gets a little bit putty-like, which I'm not a fan of. You go to set it with powder and it can grab the powder in an uneven way, which I'm also not a fan of. But then the other thing with this is not only does it crease, but it does tend to have an oil or something in here that makes my eyeliner or any mascara that I'm wearing on my lower lash line run and become visible underneath my eye. This one is one of the more expensive ones that I have in front of me. This is a very famous item and we have a makeup and breakup relationship. Sometimes I love this product, sometimes I hate it. It's like I can't make up my mind. This is the Touche Claw from YSL. This is $42. You have a brush on here and you can kind of go, like, oh. Whoops. You can kind of go like that. Try not to do it over your pants. That was a bad idea. You have the product that comes through the brush and you put the product directly on your face. You can use it, you know, any lines that you want to highlight and brighten up underneath the eye. I mean, they give you on the website even like instruction of all the different places that you can highlight with this product and conceal. Now, the one good thing about this is you can sometimes get away with putting it on top of powder, which makes it really great for touch-ups but it's just so expensive that I don't think it's worth the hype. I don't think it's worth the money. The brush on it gets really kind of nasty pretty quickly. No exaggeration or joke. When I used to work at Nordstrom at the Bare Minerals counter, 
um, I had a person come up to me and want to return this. And I was like, do you have your receipt? And she's like, no, I don't, but smell this. And I was like, oh God, we're going downhill from here really quickly. She put the brush head in front of me and it smelled so bad. Like it smelled like someone's like foot that hadn't been washed in a month. It was so gross or like a really gross old dish rag. And I was like, God, what is that? Now, if you don't clean this brush on here and you keep it for way longer than you probably should, it will turn and it can grow bacteria and it can get really funky smelling. And ever since then, in the back of my head, I'm always like, oh God, am I wiping bacteria just like all over my face when I use it? And it kind of creeps me out. We're breaking up for good. Moving on, we have the Kat Von D Locket. I love this at first and now I hate it. This is the Kat Von D Locket Concealer. I don't wanna gripe about this, but I just have to tell you guys, compared to other concealers out there, it is not worth it. I've used it enough now to realize that I prefer the Tarte Shape Tape, my Maybelline Age Rewind, my Maybelline Fit Me, my CoverGirl Outlast All Day. This just does not compete. It does wear really well, but it is a little bit tricky to put on because it wants to dry down so quickly. I just don't think it's worth the splurge. So if you were at Sephora and you're like, hey, I'm looking for, you know, not a drugstore concealer, not clay de Poe, like I don't wanna spend $90, but somewhere in the middle, this might be something that you look at and you think the name Locket Concealer, full coverage, like sign me up, it might seem like a really good idea, but I just am not a fan of the consistency of this one and I like so many other options out there that I have to say that this is officially a pass. I actually keep a journal of whether products work out or they don't, and I'm constantly listing makeup and seeing how things wore. So even if you guys don't see me sitting down and doing like a eight o'clock at night check-in and like, hey guys, it's the end of the day and I'm taking my you know face off. I'm constantly judging product. I'm constantly looking in the mirror and seeing how well a concealer wore, how a powder is doing, if an eyeshadow is creasing, because I feel like it's my job to deliver to you guys the best options for makeup, drugstore, and high end. That's what I do here. That's my favorite thing to do on my channel is just review product and get into it and discover things that are awesome. So please know a lot of these items I've held on to for a long time. I've gone back and forth. I've tried them again with different makeup. And right now is the moment where I'm like, okay, ultimately I've decided these just aren't cutting it. This is from Becca and I just don't like this. It's the Aqua Luminous Perfecting Concealer. I don't feel like you get enough even coverage. It's just too watery. And when you go to blend it out with your finger, it does not wanna blend. When you do it with a beauty blender, it picks up too much product. So it's just an uneven consistency that I don't personally like. If you want something that's a little bit lighter underneath your eye, then you might like the fact that it feels very fresh that it's not super heavy and it might be something that you're into, but for me, I want that full coverage, cancel out my dark circles, make the under eye area look flattened and bright and even, and that's the look that I go for. So whenever a concealer kind of borders on too natural, I don't really like it. So this was a pass. Now I also have a skin concealer to share with you guys. This is the Miracle Skin Transformer. Wait, this is a really long name. <sighs> Take a breath. This is the Miracle Skin Transformer Treat and Conceal. So this is a blemish concealer. It's actually going to treat your blemish and conceal it at the same time. I always want these products to work out and they almost never do because when you have a concealer that has all these properties that are gonna dry out a blemish, it tends to flake and be weird and end up having a strange consistency. And to be honest, this doesn't even really conceal that great. It has a very like whipped texture that just wants to slide off the skin where it almost feels like Benefits Professional or something that has a lot of dimethicone in it. In fact, I bet this does have dimethicone in it, which is probably not the best thing to put straight on a blemish anyway. So I'm just not impressed with this because it just doesn't cover, it just doesn't do enough. And this is $34, you only get uh, 0.33 fluid ounces, it's just, mm, no. Pass. The next thing we have is the Illumicate Concealing Eye Cream. Now again, this is gonna border on the more natural side because it's an eye cream that is enhanced with color. So Kate Somerville makes amazing skincare products, no doubt about it, I love the Exfolicate. This one, just again, it's that kind of a brush thing 
that I personally am afraid of because after a while it just gets funky. This also has just that teeny tiny bit of coverage mixed in with your eye cream that if you want to do something really natural and you don't use a lot of powders and you just kind of want a little bit of an illumination and reflection under the eye, then you might think this is the best thing ever. But for me, I just feel like I don't really ever want that. I wanna cancel out my dark circles and I'll use an eye cream and then a more full coverage concealer on top of it. And if I wanna sheer it out, I'll take a dampened beauty blender and really press and pull the product. And that's just how I like to do my concealer. So this is something that I initially really wanted to like, I like the idea of it, but it's just not for me. I am not gonna make another video about the best concealers ever that are high price. Maybe down the line as I add more into my rotation, I'll let you know, but I feel like it would be very redundant because I keep reaching for the same ones and I feel like my concealer game is pretty good right now. So I'll list a few options that I am obsessed with at the moment in the description box, but these ones just don't work for me hard pass. Let me know also in the comments if you think there's another concealer out there that you love so much, you feel is worth the hype. I'm always game to try a new concealer. It is one of those items that I'm really, really critical of, but when I find good ones, they like kind of stay in the family for a very long time. So let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share the video, and that always helps me out so much, and I really appreciate it. So... There we have it. That is it. I love you all and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Mwah.